Well, there are two things you can do on a Friday when you come to the GT1 World Championship. You can get physical in the pool if you have half a brain, or you can do what my friend John Watson is doing here and sit with your hand on your rod with a bit of fishing. David, I was told that there were piranha here, but I realised they were talking about the piranha club, but this is GT1, <laughs> GT1 World. Everybody's friendly. You can see in the pool, not a bite in sight. You caught anything yet then? Caught a few worms. And that's about it? That's about it. All right, we'll talk about the racing then for this weekend. Big weekend, great track to come to. If you, if you look at a map of the Puerto Mayo circuit, it doesn't look that special. But when you walk round it, or, or run round it, as we've been doing, well I have, not John, it's a bit hilly. This is the roller coaster for the GT1 World Championship. I think it's one of the finest race tracks anywhere in the world. Great corners, you've got a lot of elevation. It's going to be difficult for some of the guys this weekend. And of course, the big corner coming out of the pit straight, it is a monster corner and everybody will struggle because the grip level and the speed of the corner are such that it is a handful. I can't wait to see them. It's very bumpy as well out on the track and there's a, a spot for overtaking if you're brave enough, if you're late enough under the braking, into the hairpin, but there are so many bumps there. Perversely, smoother on the inside. If you've got the daring do, you can go for it. Well, I think if, you, if, you've, got, if you've got the run on your competitor down the hill, into the heaven bend, you can dive down the inside, but you've got to be good in brakes. You've got to have a car that's going to be good in brakes as well because you're going to be braking late, all the weight's going to transfer to the front. So it's always a risk. So you need to be alongside the car before you make the move. Not do it on a wing and a prayer from 20 yards back and think you're going to get away with it. So here's the question, who's going to be best set up, who's got the best car, who's got the best driver pairing to walk away with maximum points in the championship race? So I assume the Maserati is there to be aimed for. I think the Maserati, at the moment, I would say looks to be pre-race favourite. The build of the car, the, 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 the concept of the Maserati is such that it's got probably the least amount of compromises over its competitors. So I would imagine that Maserati are looking, I would think, comfortable with what they know. And they've been here before, of course. So they've got a car that they know, they've got a racetrack they've been to before. I think Maserati is my tip for the weekend. Don't be surprised then if you see the championship leaders out in front come the championship race. Five of the brands this year out of the six marks have won a championship race. Only Corvette, of course, are yet to win a race. But Corvette took the race in Porto Mayo in 2009. What chance a Corvette success for this weekend? Well, it'll come down to the, the, just simply the balance of the handling on the circuit. You've got a lot of elevation change, up, down, braking, uphill, braking, downhill, off camber corners. They've got a lot of horsepower. That's the big advantage. They can really lay that horsepower down, coming onto the straight, and use that to their advantage. So don't discount Corvette. Just a question of whether the, the rest of their package is going to be good enough on the day to challenge what I think is going to be the best car, the Maserati. So we've got four more makes to have a look at. Aston Martin, of course, and the Nürburgring ring were absolutely awesome. Enger and Turner taking maximum points, but they, I think, are going to struggle this weekend, not just with the success ballast, but with the temperature here as well, which, which plays a huge part in the way that car handles. It's very strange. If this was polar temperatures, I would say Aston Martin win a no-brainer. What do you mean if this was polar temperatures? It's actually polar freezing. temperatures. Oh, polar Sorry. temperatures. <laughs> anyway, but for some reason, when the ambient rises through the day, and of course we're going to be in the middle of the day, afternoon, for our events on Saturday qualifying Sunday race, they seem to suffer more. Now, whether it's because heat affects their V12 engine more than others, but there's a V12 in the Maserati, there's a V12 in the Lamborghini, or whether it's a tyre temperature related or aerodynamic related problem, Whatever it is, they either don't know or don't want us to know because they know we're going to blab to the world, <laughs> so the world will know. We do know that Nissan might have their problems and the bump's not helping that uh, Nissan GT car, car here, which has the grunt, of course, but I don't think it's got the full setup for the 4.7 kilometres here, John. Uh, there's the Lamborghini, which you mentioned as well, which could be there or thereabouts, but I think the big challenge to Maserati is going to come from Thomas Much in the Ford GT. The Ford have gone really well in the Friday practice sessions. Yes, very strong. Richard Westbrook, quickest of all, so he was very happy with it. I spoke to Neil Yarny, who's in one of the other Ford cars, and uh, he thinks that they've got a very well-balanced car, and that's ultimately going to be the key. You can have a very quick car in certain parts of the circuit, but inevitably, it's the overall balance, and the Ford GT, one would assume, is going to be the most consistent contender to Maserati. But to say we don't know, weather conditions will have a bearing, track temperature, the wind right now is blowing straight down the straight into the faces of all the cars. If the wind direction changes and it blows across the track, Another factor that will change everybody's dynamic. 
So we're looking forward to this weekend and the guys will get dried off in time for Saturday. Hope you've enjoyed our little preview. GT1 World has all the action. Oh, got one! Oh, got one! I can see. Oh. And John Watson has a bite as well. I think we could be celebrating with fish and wine with a legend that is the five-time Formula One winner a little later. David, it's on the top snood. Just I thought you'd the like to know that. Top snood. Top snood, yeah. Top snood for a top man.